actually am really interested in video games. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I do play video games. I just got a, one of the virtual reality headsets. So I'm trying to figure out how does that form work? Well, that's very interesting. I have friends at Khan who uh, they've just seen a Inaritu, who's a director I don't really care for that yeah. much. He sort of seemed like a one trick pony, but he's done a six minute virtual reality piece at Khan. It's in a giant warehouse outside of town and it has a sand floor and you go in alone and you put on the goggles and so you have the tactile experience of the floor and boom, you're in the desert. You're absolutely in the desert between uh, Mexico and uh, the US, California, whatever, Texas. And you know, what, you're like, wow, I'm in the desert. You know, like you, yeah. And then you see off in the distance people coming in, there are people being smuggled or, or escaping into America and they're there and then a helicopter comes in. My friends say, you just, you can't, you have to duck, you cannot handle it you know and you just feel so much part and then the truck comes up with soldiers and border guards and they have guns and they're pointing and screaming at you and you're you're trying to get out of the way you're trying to hide like you can't stop yourself from not and you're just immersed in that experience and it's it's not uh, like a movie done in VR it's a different thing it's an experience and uh, this may be sort of the first step towards creating something that's not just oh cool I'm on a mountain yep. but an actual emotional experience uh, as opposed to telling a story it creates a moment and a thing that you just can't have any other Way. And they, they, if they say it feels like, well, the Hollywood Reporter said, it's like those early movies where they point the gun and the audience would scream around the way, yeah. like, oh, ha, ha, how silly they are, primitive fools in the 1800s. It's like, well, no, here you are ducking and cowering because it feels so real and it really feels like it might be the beginnings of uh, something kind of creative in a really interesting way. Yeah, I, I no, I was thinking about it, the, exactly that, the, the, the anecdote about the, the train coming at the screen. Right. Screen and, People audience, fleeing. fleeing, and um, I've had a couple of moments sort of like that in, in virtual reality, and it's it's interesting. And I also kind of wonder if dialogue works especially well in VR, where um, you know there's always a challenge with dialogue on screen. There's a there's a you have a limited level of interest in it. You Tell know, the Woody Allen. And, and, well, and, 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 and I think how dialogue works on the screen ends up working, it, it's very different than how it works on the stage. And I've actually found myself kind of wondering if um, dialogue in VR actually might work a little more like it does on stage than on screen. Um, because one of the challenges with VR is also knowing where to look. Because you can't use the, the typical cinematic grammar of, of um, uh, you have to think. Up. You have to think like sleep no more. Yeah. You have to think of immersive. You have to think of which is why I don't know why they would build a new Broadway house with s standard seating. It should just be a flexible space. Yeah. You know, it, it's it, it, that would be fascinating actually if somebody did that. Um, but um, yeah, no, I think the sleep no more is a is a is a good comparison too. And, and but I, I have found I like watching um, um, documentaries and stuff on. In, virtual reality, 360 documentaries, and, and uh, I find myself being much more interested in the presence of a person just standing in front of me talking to me than I would if I were just watching it on a flat screen. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's just, it's fascinating in a different way. That feels more theatrical than it does cinematic. Hmm. Um, I've seen other people talk about how maybe VR is like just being in a wood and not, not like you have to go explore them, but like you're just there and you're present and you're listening and, you're, and how somehow that makes you pay more attention than if you're actually in the woods. Yeah, no, that's, that, yeah, that, and uh, uh, I think that's true as well. Everything sort of becomes heightened in a way. Uh, the, the ordinary, um, the ordinary becomes extraordinary in VR. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Roger Ebert said, uh, call me when you have a video game that's a work of art. I know, and he plays and he so tries so he's like, he's, And I'm like, I don't know, they're getting close, I think. Well, what's the closest to a work of art? Or when you hit a million on a, you know, for me, around asteroids, I mean, that's how old I am. You know. the, the, uh, there's, a, there's a game called Portal, and it has a sequel, Portal 2, that I think actually shocking, has... Shocking title. <laughs> really, it has extraordinary writing. Mm -hmm. um, it's beautifully written. It's... A, it's um, um, it's a it's a puzzle game, but it has this narrative that kind of sneaks up on you, and is uh, the characters are completely original characters, and, and it it's not a game that ever stops to tell its story. The, the movement through the game unveils the story, 
Mm. And so I think that that one is actually probably about as close as I've seen. It builds on mist, a sort of sense of like there's a more of a story than just a world to explore. Exactly, yes. It has all of the things that made mist interesting, plus a, an, an urgent story um, that has danger and it has stakes and and you come to realizations about who you are in the course of it. Um, that, that I think is, 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 is in fact a masterpiece. There's, there's a university somewhere that for their freshman reading list includes that video game. Oh, that's cool. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's on that level.